on average, it takes six hours for the tide to come in and six hours for it to go back out. But suppose you want to know quickly how much tide has come in or how much is left to go out. The proper way to do that is with an almanac and tide tables and then using a tidal curve. But there is a ready reckoner which you can use as a rough guide in your head. It's very easy to do, it's based on percentages and it's called the rule of tenths. To use it you need the tidal range for the day. That's found in tide tables and it can be quite large like uh, this spring tide at Dover where the range is seven minus a half meter, six and a half meters, 21 feet four inches. For reasons that will become clear, we don't use feet for the rule of tenths. That's for the old rule, which was called the rule of twelfths. So the range is measured in meters and it changes every day according to the state of the moon, whether you're on springs, whether you're on neaps, say. The range is the tidal height at high water minus the tidal height at low water. And that is either in the almanac or the local tide tables, or you can find it online or in the newspaper. The tide does not flow evenly. It starts and finishes more slowly than when it's in full flood or full ebb in the middle of the six hour period. Using the rule of tenths, we can estimate that the tide rises or falls 10% in the first hour, 15% in the second, 25% in the third, and then another 25% in the 4th, then it's 15% in the 5th, and a last 10% in the 6th hour. Thus, if you are 2 hours before high water, you can assume that 75% of the tidal range for the day has already risen above the height of low water. If the tidal range is 4.2 metres, then you can assume that the tide will rise just 42 centimetres more in the last hour of tide, roughly. And remember, this is only a rough guide. Better accuracy will be had from using the local tidal curve, which we'll cover elsewhere. But the rule of tenths is useful when you are anchoring or coming alongside a seawall, and you need a ready reckoner to work out how much sea level will rise or fall during your stay, and therefore how much length of anchor chain or warps to use.